uh, Things to Come, a study in biblical eschatology by J. Dwight Pentecost. Now, all the books you see behind me here, there's 21 including this, are all dispensational works. Um, and I have quite a few um, e-books and PDF books of uh, the dispensationalists, a lot more, more, more worthy than these. There's only a few that I would count worthy of, uh, that I'm even going to um, uh, review. And this would be the most foremost one um, that of what I have here, besides what I have in PDF. Um, as there's, a, there's some works, uh, Ren Reynold, uh, what's, what's his name, Reynold Showers um, wrote some works. Um, I'm, I'm interested in works like that that have to deal with the Israel in church distinction but be that as it may um, yeah we'll only cover a couple in here that are worth while discussing the rest are popular stuff some uh, commentaries uh, by uh, Jeremiah Dr. Jeremiah on Daniel Revelation uh, the battle for Jerusalem John Hagee some more uh, some more Daniel Revelation commentaries and I have about five Hal Lindsay's here Al Lindsay, he just he keeps growing and growing, you know. There's a new world coming. There's Al Lindsay. Then the 1980s count down to Armageddon, Hal Lindsay. There's Late Great Planet Earth, the original. That's three. Then then Planet Earth, 2018. <laughs> what else do we have? Well, anyway, it's supposed to be about uh, Dwight Pentecost. The reason this is a... Uh, um, a good dispensational work, not that I agree with pretty much any of it, um, is because it is a standard work of theirs. It would be like uh, the Schaefer's um, multi-volume um, systematic, right? But this is a systematic in eschatology. This is a systematic in eschatology, and uh, Pen Dwight Pentecost was a, uh, a well-respected uh, scholar, for sure. Um, yeah, very well respected scholar. But here's what you get into. Get to the table of contents. So we could show you what, what kind of study this is. It's a systematic study on eschatology. See, the, lay, the layout and the way he does this is, is fabulous. That's about all that's fabulous in the book, uh, the layout. But it's a standard work. It's a standard dispensational work, so you want to go where the dispensational scholars go. Well, you've got to go to Pentecost and uh, uh, Schaefer and uh, uh, sometimes Hitchcock when he's not writing uh, books on blood moons, like over here. Four prophecies of the tribulation period. Yeah, he really breaks this down. A friend and I were talking the other day, he was talking about doing a, a systematic in eschatology. I, uh, I showed him the table of contents here or on Amazon, I think it was. I said, check out uh, this dispensational scholar, how he lays it out. He lays it out pretty good. If you want to do a systematic on eschatology, well, Dust jackets flying on me. And I'll pretty much go over what's what's found in the book. Okay, let's go back here. <clears throat> 
And of course, like any dispensationalist, he sees there's three covenants given to Israel. There are four covenants. Uh, he splits the Abrahamic covenant up, which I don't agree with. I believe Israel's promises are found in the Abrahamic covenant, which included the Palestinian, the land promise. The Abrahamic covenant, Davidic covenant, the new covenants. But the dispensationalists have the Abrahamic covenant. Then they have the Palestinian covenant of Genesis 17. Um, unconditional, they say. And then they have the Davidic and new covenants. Uh, he gets into methods of interpretation, history of interpretation, general considerations in inter interpretation, interpretation of prophecy, methods of prophetic Revelation, he gets into types, symbols, parables, dreams, aesthetics, rules for interpret, interpretation of prophecy, interpreted literally, according to the harmony of prophecy, so on and so forth. Uh, interpret according to the law of double reference. <laughs> the, the, the double reference, the, or the double sense, the double reference, the, the double fulfillment. Oh, isn't that, isn't that a, a nice hermeneutic to have? Section 2, Biblical Covenants in Eschatology. The Abrahamic Covenant. And he, then he has the Palestinian Covenant. Then he, then he has the Davidic Covenant, then the New Covenant. And section 3, Prophecies of the Present Age. The Course of the Present Age. Uh, it has the, the Church in relationship to the ages. Um, some of the parables here. Then it gets into the partial rapture position, the post-tribulation rapture theory, the mid-trib rapture position, the pre-tribulation rapture theory, the events for the church following the rapture, prophecies and the tribulation period, the scriptural doctrine of the tribulation, uh, the relation of the church to the tribulation. Church ain't there supposedly. They've been caught up. Revelation four one, the relation of the Holy Spirit to the tribulation, <clears throat> Israel in the tribulation, the Gentiles in the tribulation, the campaign of Armageddon, the judgments of the tribulation, seals, trump trumpets, vials or bowls, judgments of Babylon. So it has a little bit here on uh, Revelation. The history and doctrine of the second advent, uh, the non-literal or spiritual view, the post-millennial, the all-millennial, the pre-millennial view, the doctrine of the second advent in, in the early church. Uh, and then uh, we have section 23 here, Roman numerals, was uh, 23, the, res the resurrections associated with the second advent, because they have four resurrections to the Dispies, right? Uh, the judgments associated with the second advent. In section, section 6, part 25, prophecies, prophecies of the millennium, the kingdom con concept of the millennium in the Old Testament. The kingdom program in the New Testament, which was put on hold supposedly in Matthew chapter 12. But Jesus, but Jesus had a different idea that the kingdom was put on hold because of Israel's rejection. He said he he said he's he's going to come in his kingdom despite Israel's rejection. Not Matthew twelve the, was the kingdom put on hold. Read Luke chapter nineteen. Read Luke chapter nineteen. A king went off to receive a kingdom. He came back. His slaves were were, were beaten. His servants, the prophets, and the apostles and prophets. Who, of course, we know who did that. Um, what happens? The slave, verse 11, verse 27, or, or the king says, he will utterly destroy those wicked men, or utterly slay them, bring them before me that I may slay them. So there was no postponement of the kingdom. As a matter of fact, the kingdom came in, in, in spite of the Jewish rejection in AD 70. We see this in Matthew 21 as well, and in, in, in Matthew 22, and uh Luke 13 to Luke 20. He talks about the millennium some more, the government concerning the millennium, worship in the millennium, uh, the eternal kingdom, the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem. 
But if you want to get a scholarly work, not a popular work, not a um, pop fiction as most of these are, the few on top that I have here I picked out because uh, I've read them, actually read them. Um, these I couldn't really, cause what's the point? It's just popular reading. Um, but uh, the few on top I've read and maybe we'll uh, give some um, um, give some more reviews uh See, we're not going to just review books we agree with. We're going to dis disagree with some works as well. But the one good thing about Pentecost is that he's, he's uh, very systematic in the layout that he does. It's, it's a very good job.